In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to assemble my three-dimensional paper tents and also give you some ideas on different ways you can use the pieces and to decorate the tents. Now, there are a couple of options. One is there are two collage sheets that you see here, a one of the Halloween tent and one of the circus tent. Um, so these... Uh, you need to print two of these to create the full tent, unfortunately. To get a big enough tent to decorate, um, you couldn't get all the pieces on one collage sheet. The other option is a digital file set, which includes all of the tent pieces and everything that you see on these collage sheets, as well as two other tents. Uh, it includes the gypsy tent, and then it includes this other tent, which I'm just calling it the carnival tent um, because the color scheme matches the Halloween carnival uh, sign for Dr. Raven's pandemonium and it's a more neutral color so it can kind of be used for all kinds of things and the digital file set also includes larger versions of both the Halloween tent and the circus tent. So uh, first I'll go through uh, actual assembly of the tents. I think I already mentioned if you're going to use the collage sheets, you need to print them twice and that will give you all of the pieces that are used to make up the tent. Um, each of these pieces are repeated. So this is the front and the back, the sides of the bottom. Then you've got uh, the front and the back of the top and the sides of the top. And then um, some of the tents are a little bit different. You'll see on these two tents, you've got a peaked roof, so you've got four pieces. But then on the other tents, you've got a flat roof, so there are actually five pieces to assemble. Now, if you're using the digital kit, then of course you're going to um, you're going to print enough pieces for uh, the full tent. And the other thing you want to uh, be sure of is to make sure that you're printing the pieces for the right size tent. Since there are duplicate tents of different sizes, you don't want to print some of the small and some of the large. So they're labeled so that you can tell the difference, but just something to think about. Um, and so what I do, the way I did it, is I print out the pieces and I kind of rough cut them out. And then I back them with some kind of a decorative paper. And then I cut them out, uh, the detail cuts. So you can see here, I have cut out all the pieces for this tent that you see in front of you here. The next thing you're going to want to do is score. Now, the tent pieces have tabs. You can see them probably more clearly on these collage sheets. And so what you're going to want to do is go through and score those uh, tab lines which I have already done, and then you're going to want to go through and decide. Uh, one of your options is that you can also score along the top, and I'll just point, you can score right along the top of this, and that way you can bend the tabs down, and you'll notice that um, there are different tabs on different tents, and let me show you, in this case, here is the large circus tent, the tabs are not scored and they're not bent down. But in this decorated piece, which I'll bring over, they are. So it's kind of up to you what type look you want, but you know, you want to do this now at the step before you actually assemble it. Um, <clears throat> another thing you might want to do um, is if you're going to uh, stick anything in the top of your tent, which you probably will have a sign or something maybe, um, or like in the case of this, not only did I have a sign, but I put all the stars across the top that say circus. You might want to punch those holes in that piece, which would be um, this side piece right here. You would want to punch the holes in that piece ahead of time because it's, I mean, you can do it after you put it together, but it's a lot harder to punch the holes after the fact. So maybe just think about what you're doing to the top of your tent um, before you actually put the pieces together. The other thing that you want to do, and you've got a lot of options here as well, is to um, create your opening for the front. Um, I deliberately left the tent plain in the front so that you could do whatever you wanted to it. 
Um, you see here in this one, I have, <coughs> I have created an opening where I've actually curled the edges back. So I've cut it right down the middle and then I've curled and glued the edges in place. Or you could do something like the circus tent here <coughs> where I actually took a template that had curvy edges and placed it on top of the piece and cut out a pattern for the doorway. Another option is this one where I just cut a square out. Very simple. Or with the Halloween tent, you can see that I bent back, I cut it in the middle, I bent it back, and then I bent it forward again. And that kind of gave me some little tabs, and I'll also turn that on the side too, so you can see that. That kind of gave me some little tabs in the front to like put the sign. And I thought that was a cute look too. Or <clears throat> this one, which is just a simple opening, split it in the middle and just open it up. The only constraint you have with your opening is don't cut away so much or cut so high at the top here that um, it won't hold together once you start assembling the pieces. So, you know, I would I would stay within, say, half an inch of the top here if you're going to cut a slit up here and then give yourself, you know, at least a half of an inch on the tops here on the sides if you're if you're cutting away the whole area here. Now, another thing is, you know, if you're going to ink some things, a lot of times when you bend things that you score, you get that white edge, you know, you could go ahead and ink up your edges. That's also something you could do right now. Or you could wait, like it depends on what I'm going to do. Sometimes I go ahead and ink it up, or if I'm going to make it more distressed, I just wait and I ink up the tent after I actually get it put together. Now, um, once you've done whatever you're going to do to the pieces, you're ready to assemble. You can see here, I've cut a slit here and folded my pieces. In this case, I folded once, then folded back, then folded forward again. So, you know, you can get really fancy with your folds. I know um, a lot of creativity out there, so I'm sure people will think of all kinds of things to do. So, you're going to then glue the bottom together. So, I, I glue one piece at a time and let it dry so I don't put pressure on it. Um, while I'm gluing the next piece. So glue the tab onto there, let it dry, glue your back on, let it dry, and glue the other side on, let it dry. <clears throat> and then for the top, this is the most complicated top because the other ones only have four pieces. Again, all the tabs have been scored and folded. So you're going to glue one side to the other and then start gluing the top in before you glue the other pieces because it's just much easier. Let that dry, then glue another piece on, and then glue the back on and that gives you a full piece. And so you end up with a top like this. And if you're going to score these, um, like I was showing you, I go ahead and bend them before I glue it together, just easier, don't put pressure on the, on the top um, to bend them. So go ahead and bend everything and then glue everything together. <clears throat> so now you should have two pieces. You've got your bottom piece, you've got your top piece. Um, a couple other things that I would do is if you're doing uh, stuff to the top signs, whatever, um, go ahead and attach all that and glue it all in place. I typically, you know, it's go I'm using pins and, and skewers and whatnot, and I am uh, poking holes and then I'm adding glue to the back side of the uh, piece to keep everything stiff and in place. So I would do all that. The other thing too is. Um, it's easier to do all the stuff for the center um, first before you put the top in as opposed to trying to put it all inside. I typically put the things on a base and then um, do all my decorating on the base and then put the tent down and glue the tent in place. Then um, after I get everything the way I want it, I glue the stuff on the outside if I'm going to do a lot of decoration like I did for the gypsy one. Um, you know, I added the fabric and the lanterns, and of course, you've got all these tabs to hang things from. So I did all of that to the tent, to each of the pieces, and then built the thing on the inside, the platform and the gypsy inside, and 
all of the goodies in the background. I did all that on top of the on top of this platform and then I put the tent on top of it. <clears throat> now um, another option that you could do with this is let's say that you wanted some completely different pattern for the outside of the tent. You could just use the tent pieces as a pattern and so you could simply not only cover the back of the pieces but also cover the front of the pieces with something else. If you do that, I suggest that you print the tent on some really thin printer paper because by the time you get that many layers of paper, just bending the tabs is kind of hard and they get really, really stiff. So that's a thought for you there. Um, another option is that you could just use the tops by themselves. Um, you could use uh, wooden dowels, skewers, whatever to, to just mount these. Um, put something in the middle or put something on all four corners and just use those as um, you know little canopies or or little tent tops without using the base of the tent. I'll talk a little bit about sizing the tent pieces. Um, regardless of whether you're using either the the um, the collage sheets or you're using the digital set, you know you might want to change the size of the tent to fit your project. So, um, of course, there is a tutorial out there already, and I'll, I'll put a link to that again, showing you how to uh, snag these images off a collage sheet and print them. But the other thing I just want to mention, and of course with the, with the digital file set, the, the images are already separate, so you can copy and paste them into whatever you want and resize them. So, the thing to remember is that you need to resize it proportionally. So, if you're if you're doing, these two are the sizes that come in the digital set. This one, of course, comes on the collage sheet. This is just one I made up. I resized everything. Um, is to do it proportionally. And when I mean proportionally, if you want it to be 25% taller, then you need to make it 25% wider as well. So all the pieces should always be resized the same proportionate amount so that the tent still fits together. And, of course, you can make it as big as you can print. This is as big as you can print the, each piece on a 8.5 by 11 sheet. Um, <clears throat> and you'll have to print some of the pieces one at a time because they're so big. And then, of course, you could go smaller if you want. I mean, I think these would be really cute as, like, place placeholders or something with people's names at a party, kids' party or whatever. So, I mean, you could use those for stuff like that as well as for um, art projects. So just remember, size it proportionally. Um, there are just so many different things you could do with these tent patterns for all kinds of projects, so enjoy!